That's all from us this Wednesday morning. Thanks for joining us. Ed has our next update at noon. Stay tuned for Mike Sinto Live. Today's topic, Dayton's drug problem. We say goodbye now with the help of some youngsters from Orville Wright School. Take care, everybody. show this afternoon at 4.30. Now, live from the studios of 1290 WHIO, your chance to take part in the Miami Valley's only midday radio talk forum. 1290 WHIO and Television 7 proudly present this simulcast segment of the Mike Sinto Show. All right, what, uh, what you are witnessing on television, those of you who are watching it, is uh, the Montgomery County Sheriff's Department on a drug raid uh, in a, uh, a Dayton area community. Now, this is, uh, this is a drug raid that occurs after uh, the search warrant has been obtained, after the undercover work has been done. Uh, rather dramatic, as, uh, as, of course, all these drug raids are. And a couple of gentlemen who we have with us today are the ones who actually set this kind of thing up. Now, let me, let me explain to you why things look a little bit different in here than they usually do on this show. The lighting is different, and the voices that you're going to hear are different as well, because we are talking to uh, Lieutenant Jim Finnegan, who you can see, uh, who is in the light, uh, who is commander of the Special Investigations Bureau of the Dayton Police Department, and two undercover narcotics uh, officers, uh, Lee and Bob. We'll simply call them Lee and Bob. And gentlemen, thank you for coming in uh, today and talking to us. Uh, how bad, Jim, is the drug problem on the streets of the city of Dayton? Uh, the mayor's told us, uh, the, the chief has told us, you tell us. I would say uh, the description of the drug problem as an epidemic is uh, very accurate. Crack, cocaine, uh, heroin, what are we talking about? Uh, crack cocaine presently uh, accounts for probably 85 to 90 percent of our drug problem. It has uh, displaced a number of other drugs, uh, some of the heroin traffic and a large amount of the pharmaceutical traffic uh, as the, the number one uh, illegal drug in this uh, county, I would suspect. Lee and Bob, we'll start with Lee. Are we over-dramatizing this thing, uh, the, the, the shows we see about it, the movies that are made about it, uh, the, the addresses that are made by politicians? You're out there in the trenches uh, dealing with this. Is it dangerous? I mean, do you actually deal with people who would stop at almost uh, nothing? Definitely. I mean, have you, have you ever actually dealt with uh, somebody who you felt like that would kill somebody? Yes, I had a 14-year-old juvenile just recently, within the last six months, uh, take a shot at my partner and I. Um, How old? 14? 14 years old, correct. Mm. Bob, uh, would you concur? Have you, I mean, are, are, is it that ruthless out there on the street? Yes, just in the uh, weapons alone that we're seeing uh, has increased dramatically the firepower that they have as opposed to what we have. And it's the youngsters who don't really care what they do, uh, their firepower, they, they just don't care. They'll, they'll take a chance if they can. Why do you do this? Uh, is, this is this a voluntary assignment? You've been doing it, Bob, for eight years. Is this, is this voluntary? Yes, it is. Why do you do it? That's an interesting job, it, and it needs to be done. We have to, we have to do something. Uh, and everything we can do to improve. You, you do get a good feeling when you do uh, take some of the drugs off the street. Are you afraid when you go out? Sure, there's an uh, element of uh, danger out there. You have to be. Okay. Uh, you know, we talk about the guns, and we just had the battle here in Dayton over the, uh, the assault weapons. Do you know people who carry assault weapons? Uh, drug dealers who carry assault weapons? Or have you ever seen any? Yes, we're recovering a lot of the uh, semi-automatic 9mm uh, weapons, more so than anything. Your AR-15s, your AK-47s, those are not as readily seen as the smaller compact 9 millimeters. Okay. Are you afraid, Lee, when you go out there? Yes, sir. Why do you keep doing it? Well, it's uh, one of those things that uh, I guess the element of... Uh, um, um, 
want to say excitement maybe yeah. that uh, takes you into the role of being almost an actor and then seeing the final disposition of your work. So your, your job is to act. Your job is to make people believe as undercover buyers that uh, you legitimately want to buy the drug. You have then set the, uh, uh, the druggie up and, uh, and then the, as we saw in the opening scenes, that's when the, the police go into action and uh, kick yeah. the doors and make the arrests. Your undercover role, you're definitely an actor. You've got to convince these people that are out there seven days a week, 24 hours a day, that you belong there. Not that you're just doing this for eight hours and getting paid for it. And if you don't convince them, it could cost you your life. You could be in trouble, yes. Okay. We're going to take a break. Uh, Lee and Bob are with us, two undercover police officers for the Dayton Police Department, uh, as well as... Uh, the, the man who uh, supervises them, Lieutenant Jim Finnegan, Commander Special Investigations Bureau of the Dayton Police Department. This is the Mike Sento Show on 1290 WHIO Radio, Television 7. We're going to show you how you can take part. You can take part in the Mike Sento Show by calling 457-1290 or toll-free anywhere in Ohio, 1-800-345-1290. We say hello to Sue. You're on with our guests, uh, Lieutenant Jim Finnegan and Lee and Bob. Hi. Hi. Yes. Yes, I'd like to know, ask the uh, gentleman, the police officer, why did they let it get so far out of hand? Before they try to stop it. Why? What do you mean? Why did they let it get so far out of hand? The whole drug problem, or yeah, the whole drug problem. They waited too late to try to stop it. Why are they trying to stop it now? Okay, Jim, uh, you want to tackle that one? Did we <laughs> have we not have we not gone after the drug? Should we have seen this a long time ago? Well, perhaps uh, we should have uh, been more active on it earlier. Uh, crack hit uh, with the exp in a real explosion. Uh, it came all at once, uh, along about uh, January of 1986. It really began to infiltrate our neighborhoods, and it hit the street with a vengeance. Uh, in uh, the late spring of 1986, um, we have been continuously involved in in attempting to address the this problem uh, at ever increasing levels since that time. I, I don't think uh, it's accurate to say we just started trying to uh, deal with it, but we're we're quite obviously not doing enough. All right. Uh, let me ask uh, Lee and Bob. Do you see the problem getting worse? Is it, you know, we're hearing about it, and we know that, that uh, we're seeing more about it on television. Is the problem getting worse today than it was, Bob, when you started eight years ago, and Lee, when you started two years ago doing this? Well, it's certainly a lot worse than it was uh, eight years ago, uh, mostly because of the crack epidemic. It's just been so overwhelming. Uh, we're all uh, gearing in to, to try to... Uh, take corrective measures on it, but it's definitely worse. Is this a winnable war, Lee? I mean, is this is this a war in the street? And, and secondly, if it is, are we winning it? I don't think I'll see it when the time span I'm in the unit, but I would say over a period of years, uh, it could be won. All right, uh, we go back to the phones and say hello to Jenny. Hi. Hi. The Great and Gator community has a chance to speak out against drugs, and I wanted to share this today. At 12 noon at Courthouse Square, there'll be a town meeting mobilizing against drugs. And this is an opportunity for the community to jump out and do something about it in Dayton. And this is being sponsored by SCLC and the United Theological Seminaries Black Church Ministries. People have got to be proactive. All right. Jenny, thank you so much. Bye-bye. We say hello to Charles from Kettering. You're on with our guests, Lieutenant Finnegan and Lee and Bob. Yeah, I just want to say I, I hope you guys will stay out there for as long as you can, and I hope you keep on busting them. Get the drugs off the street. Kids don't need them. They need to be in school. All right. They're doing a good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is this just a job to you guys? Uh, you know, you said there was excitement before when I asked you why you did it. Uh, I mean, do you feel a sense of accomplishment when, when you have successfully set somebody up and uh, they have gone down and they're going to jail? Definitely, that's probably one of the biggest things uh, is to know that you start an investigation, you go through with it as far as you can take it, and once it reaches the justice system, to see that those people are punished accordingly. You ever get frustrated, Bob, that uh, 
uh, you know, and we don't want to nail judges, and there are good judges and bad judges. You ever get frustrated, though, that some of the guys who you, who you feel are, are bad dudes, you know, and they've been nailed and they've been busted, are back out on the street? And maybe we shouldn't just blame the judges. Maybe we should blame uh, uh, the legislators and overcrowded prisons. I mean, are you concerned that we're not doing all we should to get these people off the streets and keep them? It's frustrating, but there is more that, that we can uh, do. I guess uh, where the money comes from is always the bottom line, what, what we're going to do about it. Do you see an end to this problem in, in your tenure on the department? Yes, I do. Okay. We're going to uh, take a quick break. We're talking to Lee and Bob, a couple of uh, undercover police officers with the Dayton Police Department, and Lieutenant Jim Finnegan, Commander, Special Investigations Bureau of the Dayton Police Department. You're listening to and watching The Mike Sento Show on 1290 WHIO Radio and Television 7. In addition to, uh, to Bill and Chuck and Stan and Bob and all the guys who you, uh, you see on the credits at the end of the show when you're watching it, uh, we also want to thank our radio engineer, Ron Geyer and Jim Jones from WHIO Radio for, uh, I mean, all this stuff doesn't just happen. I mean, this was uh, uh, the, the, the voices and uh, the way the lighting is in the studio. We want to thank them very much for uh, helping us on that. We say hello to, I believe, Charlotte is up next. You're on the Mike Sento Show. Hi. Uh, hello. Um, I would just like to make a comment about people getting involved as far as turning these drug dealers in. I used to live in Parkside Homes, and uh, I was taking down license numbers of crack buyers and turning them into the Dayton police. Well, as a result, some crack dealers on the street found out, threatened me and my family, and I would like to commend the Dayton Police Department because they kept guard on my house for 24 hours until I was able to move. So I would, would like to express to people that they should get involved. Don't be afraid. Even though you know you, know you might stand a chance of uh, being victimized, you still have help with the Dayton Police Department. But get involved in the right way, I right. assume, right? Jim, anything you want to add to that? Well, I, I appreciate the comment, and obviously we... Uh do everything we possibly can to uh, protect uh, the source of information that comes to us uh, and to g go out of our way to be sure that people who assist us with information are, are protected. Uh, the uh, instances where uh, people have been threatened uh, or uh, have been relatively few and uh, in, uh, instances where people have been been harmed are uh, are virtually uh, unheard of. Gentlemen, let me ask you, uh, Lee. We talked before about the uh, the fourteen year old who shot at you. I think of uh, if I could make an analogy here of, of people who were and I I served in this country. I didn't go to Vietnam, but uh, friends of mine who did. They tell me that. You know, they didn't know who the enemy was. They couldn't tell who the enemy was and who the friends were. Is it the same thing with drugs sometimes? Is it, is it difficult for us to, uh, to determine? Has it permeated our society so much that you don't know who is dealing drugs uh, and, and who isn't? In the Special Investigations Bureau, we pretty much set our own targets. So we somewhat know who we're going after. But on the street level with the uniform crews, sometimes they have no idea who the enemy really is. Bob, would you agree with that? Is it difficult for us, for, for lay people out here, to know who the, uh, the bad guys are? Sure, they can disguise what they're doing. They, they try to hide their business. They don't want, they want to know what they're doing. Is it money or is it the habit that motivates most people to do this? Depends on which end of the spectrum you're on. Uh, for a lot of people, the addiction rate is so high that uh, they spend the money. But on the other end, the people that are making it their enterprise, that's the money to them. Who's more dangerous, the user or the dealer? My opinion, the user is more dangerous. Would you agree with that, Bob? I think it's uh, both uh, the user and the seller, because the seller is the place we have to go into the fortified house and run into the weapons. All right. We say hello to uh, Chuck. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to ask the officer there, uh, why is it? I mean, they're doing a good job. They're catching these guys, but then they turn right around, plea bargain, and let, let them out. They got a guy in Franklin here who's supposed to get 23 years. They could. They're going to let him out in about two years. Jim, we got into that with uh, our undercover officers. Let's, let's hear your uh, political soapbox here. I, I think we're all a little frustrated, you know, not at any particular judge, but, but at the court system in general from what we hear and read that they're back out on the streets in a short time. Well, it's easy to be uh, 
to be caustic towards judges when uh, we don't have to uh, look at the things they do. Uh, I might disagree with the sentencing of a particular individual or uh, a per in a particular case. The fact remains that uh, if somebody goes to prison, somebody else has to come out. We have uh, overcrowded uh, uh, jail and prison conditions both locally at the county uh, jail at the city workhouse and throughout the state in the, in the prison system uh, and those judges have a lot of uh, different factors to weigh in making their decisions uh, I might not agree with them on a case-to-case -case basis but I'm not uh, I'm not ready to uh, have anyone believe that they are the the source of all our problems Lee, we talked about the 14-year-old who shot at you. Um, can you think of an incident when you were just absolutely petrified, one particular incident, then you said, you know, they know who I am, or they, you know, they're on to me, or he's got a gun, or what? I mean, is there some incident that stands out in your mind that you were really, really scared? Well, within the last six months, I was involved in a situation, uh, a pharmaceutical case, where it went two solid days and the last day uh, when the subject was in my vehicle I mentioned the fact that two of the other people that were sitting behind me in another vehicle thought that I was a police officer it's just that situation where you have to kind of think quick on your feet and hope to get the gab kicks in and you convince them that you're not who they think you are Bob you've had a little time to think about it since I asked him what is there is there one that jumps out and grabs you Nothing in particular, it's all just in general, you, like uh, Lee said, that anyone behind you could have the gun, potentially has a gun, so you always have to be cognizant of it. You ever have nightmares about your work? I have. Um, a lot of times you, you get to the point where you make the decision on whether you're armed going into a situation or whether you're not. Not all the time do undercover detectives carry their weapons on any given situation. Because if you're buying uh, in a drug house, sometimes they'll pat you down for weapons and or uh, anything else, and you've got to convince them that you're you're just a typical street buyer. Lee and Bob are uh, undercover police officers uh, dealing with drugs, as you've heard, and Lieutenant Jim Finnegan uh, is the commander of the Special Investigations Bureau of the Dayton Police Department, and they're visiting with us on the Mike Sento Show on 1290 WHIL Radio, Television 7, and they'll be... Uh, They'll be here in our next hour as well. Stay right there. What we're seeing is uh, is what happens after. Now, this is Montgomery County Sheriff's Department uh, as opposed to the Dayton Police Department where our guests are from. But I guess we're all working for the same cause. Uh, what you see is uh, the aftermath of what uh, what our guests in the studio do. They uh, They actually make the arrangements and set up the deal. And then the police officers come in to make the arrest, as you see here. And uh, uh, as you, uh, this is graphic enough, but as you can well imagine, it becomes uh, much more graphic than this and much more dangerous. Would you say that the officers who actually have to do the busting and uh, uh, in getting in there, Lee and Bob, are they uh, are they in as much danger or more danger than you? I guess then then the dealers are actually being threatened, aren't they? Well, we do uh, both ends of it, uh, okay. so it's dangerous uh, all the way through it. Uh, okay. Okay. And Lee, would you? Is yeah, the that first that? twenty seconds, first twenty seconds through the door is probably the most dangerous. Uh, but the element of surprise is uh, on our side. Okay, let's go back to the phones and we say hello to Steve. You're on with our guests Lee and Bob and Jim Finnegan. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to ask them that does it really upset them when another drug dealer kills another drug dealer? <laughs> it, it really thrills <laughs> me to wake up in the morning. Putting them on the spot, huh? It, it really. Uh, when I wake up and I read in the paper where several drug dealers have killed each other, it just makes me feel terrific. Well, I don't know that it that it makes you feel terrific. Uh, there's there's a great deal of violence that uh, is infecting our entire community. Uh, we've been fortunate to uh, uh, the last several months that that dry, that violence has been introverted among the people who are. Uh, involved in the drug trafficking they uh, they kill each other they shoot at each other uh, and we're certainly uh, thankful that that violence hasn't uh, uh, affected innocent people uh, but I I don't I don't think it's something that uh, any of us can be uh, overjoyed about can you see Lee and Bob I'm gonna ask you a very frank question and I don't know how much uh, money you've been exposed to in this 
uh, changing hands. I know that on some drug busts I've seen there's been, you know, literally millions of dollars, you know, hundreds of thousands on this one. Can you see where somebody would be swayed by that much money? In one, I, you know, I've never, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to see five, five dollar bills in my wallet at once, and you know, see bags of money. Can you understand how? Not that you would, that that you would endorse it, but can you understand how somebody would be corrupted by that much money? Yeah, I see where it could be a potential problem. Not necessarily in a geographic area that we're involved in, but farther south you get uh, Florida, for instance, where the money amount uh, just increases uh, dramatically. Um, it's a Possibility. Bob, should uh, should drugs be legalized? You know, there's been a there's been a big debate about that. The Baltimore mayor has said maybe we should. Uh, the Washington D.C. mayor says absolutely not. Uh, I think William F. Buckley, if I'm not mistaken, has said legalized drugs. You know, is it if it's an unwinnable war, and some believe it is nationally, should we legalize it? Would it make your job easier? Well, first of all, I think it's a winnable war, and I don't think they should be legalized. Why not? If if I want to take drugs and kill myself, you know, that's I, fine. But you might kill me in, in addition okay. to yourself, and I don't want that. Okay, Lee, how do you feel about it? Should should drugs be legalized? No. Yeah, I mean, you don't you don't sound like you had to think about that much. No, you've got a lot of different entities you have to look at. It's not just the legalization of drugs. It's the spinoff of it. Like Bob said, uh, you can do with yourself what you want, but as far as affecting other people, the public and the community, it's going to spin off into that. Okay. Hello, Carl. Uh, real quick question. We just have about a minute left. Yeah, uh, you just opened the can of worms. I was... Yes, hello? Yeah. Yeah, you just opened the can of worms I was wanting to talk about. If it's possible to win the war drugs, on drugs, why in the last two years has uh, it gotten worse and worse? I suggest that we legalize drugs and even possibly make a place for these people that are going to use the drugs, make a place for them, let them have the drugs, because they're getting them anyway. Through the property crime and the other things that's happening, they're getting the drugs anyway. And you can say all you want that uh, you're winning the war when it's gotten worse and worse in 10 years. Where is your... Uh, Okay, Jim, we've got about 30 seconds. We didn't give you a chance to jump in on that <clears> one. <throat> well, uh, we're, we're certainly holding our own, I believe. I think there are going to be new uh, directions, but I don't think these substances uh, are the kind of poisons that we want to unleash on our society. They kill people. Uh, the addiction kills people. Uh, and uh, it, it's unconscionable to me to consider legalization. Thanks for calling. Our lines are loaded. Stay with us. We're going to talk about this in our next hour on the radio as well. Jim Finnegan, thank you. Lee and Bob, thank you. And uh, we will be back tomorrow again with another special simulcast edition of the Mike Sento Show on 1290 WHIL Radio and Television 7. <laughs> This simulcast segment of the Mike Sinto Show was a presentation of 1290 WHIO Radio and Television 7. Join us tomorrow morning for another exciting guest and conversation. The Mike Sinto Show can be heard weekdays from 9 till 1 on AM 1290 WHIO.